All right, welcome to our unit on stoichiometry. Today's topic is moles, molecules, and mass calculations. Lesson one of three, your objectives are as follows. To learn how stoichiometry applies to chemistry and chemical reactions. To review dimensional analysis and become familiar with the various conversion factors used to solve stoichiometry problems. To be able to perform stoichiometry calculations that involve moles, grams, and the number of molecules in a mole. Okay, feel free to pause this video anytime you feel necessary for your quick write. In chemistry, we count by weighing moles. We can't measure moles in a lab, but what unit of measurement allows us to measure moles? Okay, a little review here. Using the equation below, what is the mole ratio between hydrogen gas and ammonia? What about nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, stoichiometry. Chemistry is really about chemical reactions. Stoichiometry is simply, or basically, the math of chemical reactions. If a reaction is balanced, it is possible to determine the amount of chemicals required or produced for a given chemical reaction. Stoichiometry is defined as the calculation of quantities of chemical elements or compounds involved in chemical reactions. Recall our simple sandwich recipe below, which called for a certain amount of ingredients. In this case, two slices of bread, one slice of meat makes our sandwich. Okay, well just as a cook or chef uses a recipe to determine how much ingredients are needed, chemists use the coefficients or moles in a balanced chemical reaction to determine how much of a particular chemical is needed or produced. For example, let's say a chemist would like to make two molecules of ammonia. Okay. To do this, he or she will need to use the coefficients below and start with one molecule of N2, three molecules of H2 to make the two molecules of NH3 or ammonia. But what if the chemist would like to produce two moles or two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of ammonia? To do this, once again, he or she will need to use the coefficients below and start with one mole of N2 okay, and three moles of H2 to make the two moles of ammonia or NH3 here. So as you can see, it is the moles or coefficients in a balanced chemical reaction that allows chemists to create and calculate the desired amount of product produced in a chemical reaction. Stoichiometry calculations involve dimensional analysis. In stoichiometry, units are more important than numbers. By canceling units, you will be able to calculate the correct answer. For example, consider the problem below. According to the chemical reaction here, how many grams of ammonia NH3 can be produced from 13.3 grams of H2? Okay, think about what this question is asking. You have 13.3 grams of H2 can produce, okay, how many grams of ammonia? All right, so follow our steps that we've used in the past. Start with what the problem gives us. All right, 13.3 grams of hydrogen gas. All right, what are the conversion factors? We know the molar mass of hydrogen, one mole of H2, has a molar mass of 2.02 grams of H2. And we know that three moles of H2 can produce two moles of ammonia. And we know the molar mass of ammonia, one mole of NH3 weighs 17.03 grams. Okay, set up the calculation so the units cancel. Okay. 2.02 grams of H2 is to one mole of H2. I have moles here, I'm gonna need moles down here. So, three moles of H2, okay, is to two moles of NH3. We use our mole ratio here, okay? And finally, we know that I have moles of NH3 here, I'm gonna need moles of NH3 here. One mole of ammonia has a mass of 17.03 grams of ammonia, okay? Our units now cancel. All right, and we can now solve the problem, okay? By canceling our units, all right, we can arrive at the correct answer, 73.23 grams of NH3, okay? So what is stoichiometry? Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm gonna move on. All right, conversion factors in stoichiometry. 
A conversion factor is a ratio or fraction that represents the relationship between two different units. When performing stoichiometry calculations, you will need to consider the conversion factors that exist between moles, molar mass, moles given in the balanced chemical reaction, which is the molar ratio, and the amount of atoms or molecules in a mole, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, Avogadro's number. Okay. If you recall, we use conversion factors when performing dimensional analysis calculations. So consider the general reaction here, where 2x plus 3y okay, will make or produce 2xy. Okay, We could write possible conversion factors to help us solve stoichiometry problems that involve the above general reaction. So for example, we know that one mole of x is equal to the molar mass of x. Okay, And we also know that one mole of x contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules of x. Okay, And according to our reaction, we know that two moles of x requires three moles of y, our mole ratio. Okay, our general reaction also tells us that two moles of x can produce okay, two moles of xy. Once again, our molar ratio. Well, we could also write conversion factors for y. Okay, we know that one mole of y is equal to the molar mass of y in grams. Okay, and we also know that one mole of y contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules of y. And three moles of y okay, requires two moles of x. And three moles of Y, according to our chemical reaction, can produce two moles of XY. Okay? So what are the conversion factors used in stoichiometry? Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side here. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so stoichiometry problems, mole to mass. So consider the following mole to mass stoichiometry problem below. Okay, according to the chemical reaction here, what is the mass in grams of O2 that can pre be produced from 1.5 moles of KClO3? Okay, so always balance first. If it's not balanced for you, all right, now think about what the question is asking for. If we're starting with, or we have 1.5 moles of KClO3, this can produce how many grams of O2? All right, so now we just start using our steps. Okay, so start with what the problem gives you. Okay, so we're starting with 1.5 moles of KClO3. What are the conversion factors? All right. Set up the calculation so the units cancel. All right, so we have moles of KClO3. Down here, we're going to need moles of KClO3. Okay. Because we're given moles in the problem, we can go directly into our mole ratio here. So two moles of KClO3 okay, can produce three moles of O2. And one mole of O2 has a molar mass of 32 grams of O2. Now remember, the question is asking for grams of O2. Whatever the question is asking for should be in this top right-hand corner. Okay. Now that all of our units cancel, we can solve the problem and we get 72 grams of O2. All right. All right. So go ahead and practice here. Remember to balance first. All right. Go ahead and pause this while you work on this. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. Okay. So let's see how you did. Balance first. Okay. Two, we have, we're starting with 2.3 moles of H2O, which can produce, okay, how many grams of O2? So you got to think about what the question is asking for here, all right? Now we can start using our steps. Start with what the problem gives you, 2.3 moles of H2O, okay? What are the conversion factors, all right? Well, we're given moles in the problem, so we can go right into our mole ratio here. We have moles of H2O here. We're going to need moles of H2O down here. So set up the calculation so the units cancel. Two moles of H2O here is two. Our mole ratio, one mole of O2. Okay. One mole of O2 has a molar mass of 32 grams of O2. All of our units cancel. Moles of H2O, moles of O2. Okay, and we get, okay, solving the problem, 
36.8 grams of O2. Hopefully you did that correct. All right. All right, so stoichiometry, mass to molecules. Anytime you have a question that involves atoms or molecules, think of Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so according to the chemical reaction below here, how many molecules of NH3 can be produced from 13.3 grams of H2, okay, or hydrogen gas? All right, so think about what the question is asking. We have 13.3 grams of H2, okay? which can produce how many molecules of NH3, all right? So let's start with what the problem gives us, 13.3 grams of H2. We have grams of H2 here. We're gonna need, okay, grams of H2 down here. So which one of our conversion factors has grams of H2? It looks like this one, okay, the molar mass of H2. So we gotta set up the calculation so the units cancel. Okay, grams of H2 down here is to one mole of H2. We have moles of H2 here. We're going to need moles of H2 down here. Okay, use our mole ratio. Three moles of H2 is to two moles of NH3 ammonia. And we know that one mole of NH3, if you have a mole of anything, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles or molecules of NH3. Okay, our units cancel. Now we can solve the problem and we get 2.64 times 10 to the 24th molecules of NH3, okay? All right, so practice here. According to the chemical reaction below, how many molecules of NH3 can be produced from 0.5 grams of H2? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on this. When you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right, so let's see how you did. Okay, think about what the question is asking here. You have 0.5 grams of H2, all right, you're starting with, which can produce how many molecules of NH3, okay? So start with what the problem gives you, okay? 0.5 grams of H2. What are the conversion factors? Well, we know the molar mass of H2 is 2.02 grams of H2. We know our mole ratio, and we know that one mole of NH3 contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, now we gotta move to step three here. So we gotta set up the calculations so the units cancel. We have grams of H2 here. Okay, we're gonna have 2.02 grams down here. The molar mass is to one mole of H2. So we have moles of H2 here. Down here, I'm gonna need moles of H2. And I know that three moles of H2, okay, can produce two moles of NH3. And finally, I know that one mole of NH3, okay, is to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of NH3. Okay, our units cancel. All right, and now we can move to step four. Solving the problem, we get 9.93 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of NH3. All right, hopefully you got that one right. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about today is mass to mass problems. Okay, probably the most important one here. So. According to the chemical reaction below, what is the mass in grams of MgO that can be produced from 56.9 grams of magnesium? Okay, always balance first. All right, and think about what the question is asking. All right, we're starting with 56.9 grams of magnesium, which can produce how many grams of MgO? All right, okay, so moving on to our steps here. Step one, start with what the problem gives us, 56.9 grams of magnesium. Okay, what are the conversion factors? All right, well, we know the molar mass of one mole of magnesium, according to our periodic table, is 24.31 grams of magnesium. And our mole ratio, two moles of magnesium produces two moles of magnesium oxide. Okay, and one mole of magnesium oxide has a molar mass of 40.3 grams of magnesium oxide. All right, so we can set up the calculations so the units cancel. I have grams of magnesium here. I'm going to need grams of magnesium there is to one mole of magnesium. So if I have moles of magnesium here, I'm gonna need moles of magnesium there and my chemical reaction, the moles in my chemical reaction allow me to tell that two moles of magnesium is to two moles of magnesium oxide. And if I have moles of magnesium oxide here, down in this corner, I'm gonna need, okay, 
One mole of magnesium oxide is to 40.3 grams of magnesium oxide. Our units cancel. All right. Solve the problem. And we get 94.3 grams of magnesium oxide. All right, now it's your turn. All right, so practice. According to the chemical reaction below, how many grams of Cl2 are required to completely react with 17.3 grams of sodium? Okay, don't forget to balance this equation. All right, go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, when you're ready to check your work, hit play. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so think about what the question is asking for. 17.3 grams of sodium. Okay, to use up all that sodium, it requires how many grams of Cl2? All right, so start with what the problem gives us. Okay, what are the conversion factors? Well, we know one mole of sodium has a molar mass of, according to our periodic table, 22.99 grams of sodium. And according to our chemical reaction, two moles of sodium require one mole of Cl2. And one mole of Cl2 has a molar mass of 70.9 grams of Cl2. All right. Set up the calculations so that the units cancel. All right. We have grams of sodium here. Down here, I'm going to need grams of sodium. Okay. So 22.99 grams of sodium is to one mole of sodium. And according to our chemical reaction, I have moles of sodium here. I'm going to need, okay, two moles of sodium here is to, or requires one mole of chlorine, Cl2. And one mole of chlorine has a molar mass of 70.9 grams of Cl2, okay? Our units cancel, all right? And hopefully you got 26.8 grams of Cl2. All right, so summarize. You can always write your own. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you're right, and we'll see you next time.